Hello, my name is Joel Z. Williams, and uh, the purpose of this lecture is I'm going to talk about a economic and a political strategy called the Cobra Effect that I think has some relevance in what has happened recently in Connecticut. Recently, there was a school shooting where 20 children were killed by a 20 year old disturbed loner. Uh, named Adam Lanza used two pistols from what we know and a semi-automatic uh, uh, assault weapon, uh, assault rifle, a 223 Bushmaster. Uh, this is the same type of weapon that was used by uh, John Muhammad and Levoy Malvo, the Beltway snipers, during their um, uh, killing of a lot of civilians in the Beltway area. The Cobra Effect, in a nutshell, represents a economic theory uh, in which public policy is created that has a, the unintended, unintentional effect of making the problem worse than it was to begin with. In other words, the policy that was implemented exacerbated the current situation and made the problem even worse. The Cobra Effect, we know, um, is taught in the B schools, the business schools that, that give MBAs, Masters of Business. Um, Wharton teaches the Cobra Effect, uh, Northwestern University of Chicago, uh, all these schools that are the preeminent leaders in, in uh, teaching, forming uh, future business leaders and government leaders about the dire consequences of creating a public policy that actually works to unravel what you're seeking to obtain. Uh, the Cobra Effect in origin starts in 17th century English colony. Uh, at that time, the British were the colonial power over India, and the local British governance determined that there were too many people being bitten by cobra snakes and it offered a bounty uh, for people to bring in the tails uh, of cobra snakes or maybe the heads, I don't, a component, a piece of that reptile would have to be shown in order to receive a bounty and uh, it worked pretty good for a while but after uh, some time had passed the British uh, governing body looked around and they started they, they saw the same numbers that although the policy was in effect and they were paying a lot of money into these this bounty program people were still being bitten by cobras at around the, roughly the same rate or even higher than they had been prior to implementing that public policy and the British uh, uh, Mato Barata the, the, the governance uh, essentially disbanded and and stopped funding the uh, Cobra incentive program. So overnight, uh, what had happened was that several industrious Indian people had uh, come up with the idea that they would put a male Cobra and a female Cobra together in a pen and somewhere in their backyard or on their property and raise Cobras and, and therefore they would be able to uh, sh kill the, the offspring and, and show the uh, local governing body the skin and recoup the bounty but once the British rescinded the bounty once they discontinued the bounty the it, it removed the incentive of the the natives that had been growing these uh, raising these cobras it removed the incentive overnight for them to maintain that and rather than uh, attempting to sell them out piecemeal or uh, you know, kill them all, they simply broke up in their pans and let the cobras go into the forest. And so now, what, that, what had happened was now the problem was even worse than the public policy that had been initiated to eradicate the program. So the cobra effect in an economic term and a, um, uh, a public policy term references a public policy that is has although it has in, initially has good intentions ha, comes back to haunt you comes back to have worse 
outcome than if you had done nothing at all. I was listening to President Obama's speech tonight and he's saying, you know, we're upset about this. We're, we can't stand for this. There's 20 young children that were killed as a result of someone using a firearm uh, of high capacity, uh, Bushmaster 223. Anyone can argue that that's the same gun that the military uses, the, the M4, the primary uh, long arm of the U.S. military. So President Obama is short of coming out and saying, I am uh, directing Senator Dianne Feinstein from San Francisco to propose a new assault gun ban for the country. Short of saying that, he said something to the effect of, certainly we can't stand this. Certainly this, this cannot continue. We can't allow this to continue. And I think what people fail to realize is President Obama is savvy enough to understand that the assault weapons ban of 1994 that was allowed to sunset the, the, the ban that said that you could own a firearm, you could own a assault weapon, but they couldn't have a pistol grip, they couldn't have a barrel shroud, they couldn't have a, a suppressor, couldn't have a, um, I think it was a, a bayonet, couldn't have all these accoutrements that they could, you could have in, in essence something that you could hunt with and it could hold maybe 10 rounds or something, you can hold, you can keep that, but you could not own something that uh, you know that you could do some participate in some mass shooting. Um, I think President Obama is is savvy enough to know not to fall into that pit trap uh, during the 1994 uh, during that period. I think uh, uh, assault weapons were banned for close to 10 or 15 years. Did not really make a marked decrease in the use of that weapon in crime. And, and so I think he was savvy enough to avoid that pitfall. But one of the things I think is interesting, and something that I think we need to consider as a society as we grapple with uh, the power of public sentiment, and this is something I think Americans underestimate the power of the paradigm shift. When, when po American popular sentiment moves away from supporting something that had, it had previously adamantly supported it is very quick to happen. We see this with prohibition was probably the first example. Of course, uh, prohibition is the 18th Amendment uh, banning. Well, actually, that was the one to reinstall it. it reinstall it. But uh, this concept that we could ban the sale of alcohol in all the states, at the time, uh, there was a lot of public sentiment for it. But as people grew to realize the um, secondary, tertiary, even quadrannary effects, this Cobra effect that I'm talking about, the rise of, of the mafia, the uh, beginnings of organized crime as we know it, the Lucchese family, the, the um, uh, Al Pacino, or uh, I'm sorry, the uh, Al Capones and the uh, <clears throat> Meyer Lanskys, uh, these people would not have come to prominence had it not been for their ability to run these illegal liquor rackets. Um, so Obama, in his speech tonight, is savvy enough to say, we need to do something about it, but first I need to consult with the experts in mental health, the experts in the firearms industry, the experts in, in, in the uh, uh, school and education industry. We need to come to uh, some kind of agreement on what is the best, best method to enact. And so, what, going back to an earlier point, when I'm talking about American public sentiment can change quickly, um, we all know that the National Rifle Administ Association has a very strong lobby in Washington, but I was very, um, I thought it was conspicuously absent today on the um, Meet the Press and the, the Fox show, all, all the Sunday morning uh, news shows that no one from those gun rights organizations uh, were, were in attendance. I thought that was conspicuously absent. And I think that at some point, I've always wondered what would be the scenario when American popular sentiment moves away. Looking back in history, we can, of course, look to uh, 
Pearl Harbor, uh, 1941, uh, in America. This is a time when the, the, the current president, FDR, was trying to draw us into a war with Germany. Uh, at the time, the, the World War I that had happened not too long ago was still very fresh in people's minds. And they did not want to get intricated into some war that they didn't see themselves, they, di they didn't see the necessity of it. But then December 7th, 1941 happened and the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor. And then you had a society, an American um, uh, um, populace that was adamantly, two, two days prior, was adamantly against going to war and intervention in, in, in the war in Europe. And then all of a sudden, boom, let's go. 9-11, very similar incident. Um, prior to 9-11, most Americans were lukewarm uh, about military involvement in, in the Middle East. And after 9-11, oh yes, we need to go to Afghanistan, Pakistan region and rain down some bombs. The American public sentiment shift, this paradigm shift that I'm talking about, um, there's a very, very, very close proximity between these shootings and the uh, Batman Rising sh uh, Rises shooting in Colorado, the uh, shooting of Gabrielle, uh, the, the congresswoman from, from Tucson, Arizona. Uh, these things seem to be in close proximity. And my th uh, opinion is, is that the NRA and other gun uh, rights advocates need to come to the table and they need to offer some solutions. One of the solutions that they might offer is to close the gun show loophole. This concept that if you go to a gun show, uh, this, it would be too onerous for the federal government to require a private seller to run a potential buyer of a weapon through some kind of federal uh, uh, licensing and make, making sure that they meet the ATF the alcohol, tobacco, and firearms regulations that they don't have a prior felony. The concept of allowing that loophole at the gun show was so that the average person that was selling one or two guns uh, would not have this um, federal uh, burden placed upon them where they would, uh, before they could sell the gun, they would have to participate in 30 or $40 worth of investigator uh, background checks. Uh, that loophole, the, the gun advocates need to put that loophole on the table. Uh, another thing that they need to offer uh, in consideration to uh, lessen the, the public outcry against them is they need to start uh, uh, putting the concept of these high capacity magazines for pistols and other firearms on the table. And uh, so that, that, in a nutshell, I know I'm rambling, I went and covered a lot of topics here, but one thing I want you to take away from this is that the Cobra effect is we don't want the federal government to do some knee-jerk reaction uh, thing that is going to, in the long term, make problems worse. And uh, secondarily, we want gun control, uh, or I'm sorry, gun manufacturers and, and the, the gun industry to own up to some responsibility for what's going on and, and uh, put some measures on the table so that we can ne negotiate a settlement.